We constantly get asked, are granny flats a good investment? Now in this video, we're gonna talk about six of the reasons we love granny flats and share our experiences from helping over 50 people build and rent out granny flats up here in Queensland as well as New South Wales. Awesome bro, so as an investor, one of my favorite things is cash flow. So let's mm. talk about that as number one. Yeah, to me, cash is absolute king, especially as we're working towards achieving financial freedom. The more cash flow that you can receive from your investments, the easier that it's gonna be to get to that passive income goal. So the best thing about granny flats is they rent extraordinarily well. Now up here in Brisbane, you're, we're seeing granny flats rent out anywhere from $300 per week all the way up to potentially $450 per week. Now that's for a one to two bedroom granny flat in the backyard. So that's significant cash flow. But if you look down to areas in New South Wales, Sydney in particular, I'm seeing people rent these granny flats out anywhere between 350 all the way up to potentially $600 per week. Now, as a second income on the property, that can really help for a number of different reasons that we can go into. But essentially, cash flow is the major reason that we are going for this granny flat strategy. Now, cash flow is one of the good benefits, but there's also a nice short-term benefit that you can get from the tax right as well. And from your experience building a few of these, the depreciation can work out quite well. Yeah, so if you work with your accountant or a company like BMT Tax Depreciation, after you've completed the construction, they'll produce a report for you and thankfully the Australian government really supports this at the moment. That could change in the future, but right now it's really strong. Um, I've seen clients and myself personally get anywhere from about $2,500 per year of tax benefit all the way through to about $7,000 on wow. a granny flat, which is a huge help. Love that. But then the third thing is just reducing your risk. Obviously, investing in any asset class comes with its risks and they can be sometimes hard to stomach, but generating two incomes from the one property can certainly reduce the risk in the sense that if one tenant stops paying their rent, then you still got the money coming in from the main dwelling or from the granny flat. Or if somebody just moves out naturally at the end of their lease, then you've still got some income coming through that. And it definitely helps and as we're starting to see that narrative shift and we know that interest rates are starting to come up a little bit that cash flow is going to become a little bit more tricky for some investors and and having those two incomes having that stronger cash flow can really help sustain those higher interest rates you know on top of that the demand for these things are absolutely insane now there's not too many options like a granny flat out there in the market because when we're building these types of assets and these types of dwellings, they're generally in nice, quiet, family-friendly streets. So when you're looking at your comparisons, you're really looking at a unit or, or maybe a really rundown small house. And that's not always desirable for a lot of people. So when you can get you know, off-street parking, you can get your own little backyard and your own little privacy space, um, it definitely adds that demand to these types of assets. So we've seen these types of granny flats rent out insanely fast on the market, especially up here in Brisbane right now with the rental crisis that we are experiencing. Um, everybody's looking for more affordable rental options and these are definitely helping. Um, but it's not always the case. I remember back during COVID, you had a little bit of a scary situation with one of your houses and granny flats. Yeah, like my um, tenant, like as many did, just sort of left the keys in the sink one <laughs> night and just did a bit of a runner. But thankfully I had the granny flat out the back and that granny flat was able to cover some of that missing rent and that mortgage. So that's why I like it from a risk perspective. It helped me manage a bit of an uncomfortable time. Awesome, so one of the biggest misconceptions with granny flats is this concept that they don't or they impact capital growth. Now, we had a client years ago, um, Dave from Sydney, and Dave was just a, a normal income earner earning about 80 to $100,000 per year for the 25 years of his working career. And he'd bought three houses in Sydney, one 20 years ago, one 15 years ago, one 10 years ago. Now, at some point in New South Wales, they made a statewide position around granny flats, which meant he could rent them out on any of his properties. And so he went and built three of them. Now, my first question was, well, Dave, what happened to the value of that home once you built the granny flat over a 20, 15, 10 year period? And he said that the house prices on all three properties 
had actually increased in line with market value mm. plus the cost of the granny flat, which for me was the first reason to start you know, there's a lot of misconception around this. A lot of the property chat forums online are like massively anti-secondary incomes. And after getting that example from Dave, I felt much better. And that sort of links back to the fifth thing that we we're hoping to talk about, which is high demand. And that's in terms of resale potential, but also from a rental perspective. As we start to see property prices increase throughout Australia, you know, having that extra dwelling in the backyard can make life a little bit easier because Michael Matusik did a bit of a study where he looked in southeast Queensland and the number of generations that are living under households. Now, right now, there's over 30% of households that have at least two generations and about 6% of households that have more than well, three or more generations. Now, in the future, he expects this to increase two generations to above 40% and with three generations to potentially 15%, which is massive. So, you know, if you've got your family that are living in the house and you can potentially rent out the granny flat to mum and dad or grandma and grandpa, or even make it sort of a teenage retreat, or even just have it out there as like a separate rental income. So if you live in the house and then you can actually generate some sort of income from the home out the back as well. Um, so there's a lot of demand from that perspective. And what we're seeing in the market at the moment, as I was saying earlier, you know, we had over 23 groups come through an inspection recently to one of our granny flats down in South Brisbane. And uh, it actually ended up renting out for $350 per week. Uh, so these are really, really sought after product. Um, but you just gotta be careful up here in Southeast Queensland where you do do them because not everywhere can you actually rent them out separately only really in Logan City Council and Ipswich City Council. If you meet the requirements, you can actually rent them out separately. But we've seen in other parts of, of the city as well, people execute these types of strategies and just rent them out to one big family because these are pretty high percentages when we're talking two and three generations living under the one roof. So the more rooms, the more bathrooms, the easier it makes it for those families. 100% man, like I think through COVID, we've really seen as property prices in some parts of Australia go up and also rents have gone up so drastically mm. recently that there's many people starting to make completely different decisions than they've made in the past. Now, some of those people have just been like, I've seen them come to Queensland, two families, mm. you know, rent out a house. I actually had one where I could legally rent the house and granny flat out separately, but a family came up from Sydney or two families and they decided that they'd actually rent the entire house and granny flat off me. There were four income earners in the family earning over $300,000 per year and they were happy to rent that product off me for about 950 bucks a week, which was insane. So as we move through different stages of the cycle and you know that difference between um, lower income earners and higher income earners continues to stretch in Australia like America, this type of product is gonna get more and more valuable. Um, from our personal experiences, we've seen in markets with a vacancy rate below 2%, really, really strong pickup, whether that's Sydney, the Central Coast, Wollongong in New South Wales, or the parts where you can legally do it in Brisbane, very, very strong pickup of mm. these granny flats. We've seen um, most of them rent within a week, if not a week within two for very, very good prices. And we've started to see in both New South Wales and Queensland, those rents been notched up over the last sort of three months. So while it is a very, very strong cash flow strategy with some good tax benefits and some strong capital growth potential long-term, it's absolutely not for the faint hearted. No, it can be tricky. I, I kind of consider this an active strategy because you can't just plonk a granny flat in the backyard of any old property. You know, you need the site plan to be suitable. You need a nice wide frontage. You need some side access. You want a nice big open backyard. And if it's not open, then you've got to, you know, make it open by pulling down trees, garden beds, sheds potentially. So it uh, requires a little bit of action. It requires a, a bit more of an active strategy. Uh, but what I love about it is it's kind of that less is more strategy. You know, you can generate really strong cash flow from this particular strategy, which might mean for your journey to financial freedom, you don't need to purchase as many houses, meaning you don't need to go into as much debt. And sometimes when you're not going into as much debt, it is quicker to pay off those 
uh, the debt remaining on those properties and you can actually reach your goals a little bit sooner. So for me, I'll personally hold a, a balance of both of these types of assets, single income and these house and granny flats within my portfolio. Um, I like to have a bit of a balance, a bit of diversification there as well, um, but absolutely love it from a capital growth and a cash flow play. And I love actually manufacturing some cash flow. Like when I'm getting, you know, a, a three to 4% rental yield on my single income home, and then I build a granny flat in, you know, I'm, I'm investing in Brisbane, the third largest capital city in Australia, where I believe the rental yield is sitting at about 3.4% right now. By adding this granny flat, sometimes you can get a, a higher than a 5% rental yield, which you know puts me in a much safer position. I love that, bro. So for those of you out there that are thinking about buying a property in Southeast Queensland, we'd love you to jump over our website, www.pumpedonproperty.com, where you can click the free strategy session button and talk to myself, Simon, or one of the team members about where you are now where you'd like to be in the future. And then we can give you an update on the market and you can take that information and go and absolutely smash it on your own or maybe become one of the small number of clients we work with each month. And we are supporting people to buy great investments and then introducing them to town planners, solicitors, builders, and all of the right people to make that granny flat process a little bit smoother, a little bit easier. But either way, we wish you all the best. I personally love this strategy and have used it before and can't wait to see it unfold in the future. Woo! That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Getting Have a spin. Yeah. Oh, sweaty. <laughs> so sweaty. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's so nice, eh? Oh.